the 90 right there. This engine is a gem. It's so energetic. It's so lively. Let's address the elephant in the room, shall we? These big grills. Well, we saw this on the 4 Series before, but now even the M3 gets these large kidney grills. I don't think it's apt to call them kidney anymore. They're more like lungs. But I actually like this now. It's grown on me. I know there's a lot of debate regarding this, but especially here in the M3 with these really aggressive bumpers, a lot of aerodynamic channels, uh, it, this does also not have that um, frame around the outside. And because of that black color, it looks really menacing, especially with these hood scoops, or rather these, um, these indentations. It looks really muscular. It's almost, you know, it's very Atari, very anime, very futuristic. What do you guys think of the front design? Of course, you get the optional laser lights over here, very sleek. And overall, there's no way to ignore this car if you ever see it on the road. Let's take a look at the side profile. Of course, the first thing you'll notice are these really gorgeous wheels. As is the case with previous generations, the front are narrower and they're 19 inches, the rear are 20 inch wheels and they have a wider section as well. More aerodynamic channels, like for example from the front bumper, the splitter, it creates an air curtain around the side of the wheels. There's also air channeling under the chassis to suck the ground, a car closer to the ground. M Competition badging on the left hand side here, carbon fiber. Uh, outside rear view mirror cap, the optional carbon pack, black skirts for the sides, and a very sharp crease, uh, crease here for the design line. One running through the top uh, over the door handles and another crease coming down this way. Very aggressive, very athletic, really nice sloping roof line and carbon fiber roof as standard. Both the M3 and the M4 are pretty much the same platform, so the wheelbase is the same. The M4 is a little bit lower in terms of height, but uh, yeah, the sedan version is the M3, so the back is quite different than the coupe, and of course, you get additional doors. And of course, my favorite part of the M3 are these flared wheel arches, just gives the car a great stance on the road. On the boot lid, we have a carbon fiber spoiler, very subtle, but of course, since it's in carbon fiber, it does stand out. M3 competition badging over here. The tail lamps are also really nice, very sleek LED. In the M3, they curve upwards, as you can see, but in the M4, there's a little bit of a dip as it then uh, curves around the side and then rises. Further down, a gorgeous carbon fiber rear diffuser and, of course, twin uh, exhaust pipes, so quad pipes, two ports on each side. In fact, the M3 and the M4 are pretty much the same platform, so they have the same suspension. They come as standard with the same six-piston Brembo, sorry, six-piston brakes, um, sports suspension, and these uh, these sports exhausts are standard, and they sound fantastic. <laughs> Let's take a look under the hood. And this is one of my favorite engines of all time. This is the S58. But of course, uh, for this new generation of the M3, it's been revised, it's been improved even more. For example, with a lighter crankshaft and such. In the standard M3, it makes 480 PS or metric horsepower. In the M Competition, like we have here, it makes 510 PS. The M3 and the M4 uh, can be had with a manual and it's only rear wheel drive. The M3 or M4 competition comes only with an 8-speed automatic, but you still can choose between rear wheel drive and all wheel drive. 0 to 100 for the standard M3 or M4 is about a little bit over 4 seconds. Uh, for the competition, it's just under 4 seconds, around 3.9. All right, let's take a look inside the M3. <laughs> very bright orange color, very orange soda. But uh, you know what? This car comes in really flashy colors for the exterior. So why not have flashy colors for the interior? Make everything an occasion, because 
it's an M3 for crying out loud. But as usual, everything has a nice tightness, a nice tautness and rigidity to the build quality. So plush materials over here, all around, very nice solid door handles and switches as well. Door pockets, although they're not quite as large. Down there you see the M3 competition badging. Now these are the standard sport seats that come with the M3 or M4. So these are the standard sport seats. You can optionally get a bucket seat, but uh, unfortunately they are all full leather here. There's a little bit of Alcantara on the side, but the main material here we are uh, in contact is leather. But there's a lot of adjustment down here, as you can see electronically, and you can save a couple memories as well. So pretty good. Getting inside, well, to be honest, I would have liked a little bit more, you know, to feel a little bit more special. I wish it was a little bit fresher. This is very BMW, which is not a bad thing, don't get me wrong, but it doesn't feel as different. So the front and the outside, the way they've made that completely new and it's so radical, that does not translate on the interior, in my opinion. Nevertheless, you have a very familiar steering wheel, which we know works really great. Nice and chunky. We'll take a closer look at what it can do. You have a screen for your virtual uh, cockpit, your digital instruments, as well as the screen over here. This is 12.3 uh, and this is 10.25 inches. A lot of buttons here, so really happy to report that. And you're sitting really low down, very snug. Of course, I like to keep the seat all the way down. This is an M3, you should always have the seat in a very low position so you get a good um, overview and it's a very sporty feeling. So therefore, plenty of headroom, plenty of headroom. This carbon fiber roof can be swapped for a panoramic roof at no extra charge, but um, I think it goes with the aesthetic. The roof liner is all black. There's a lot of black up here, although materials are good and soft touch. Nice texture over here for the vent and nice textured inlays as well. But um, I think this orange color, now I understand it really pops. There's some other options if you don't like orange. But um, yeah, apart from that, the rest of it is still a little bit so-so. Like I said, not really anything new. This is the M steering wheel. This actually is a progressive steering rack, which means that the more input you provide, the rate of steering increases, so it makes it very dynamic to drive. Seated, sorry, <laughs> heated steering wheel button over here. Now this version does not have the advanced driver assistance systems in terms of the radar cruise control. There's a standard cruise control here, which you can uh, control with this button over here. This is for the uh, media system and your telephone and the menu for the head-up display, which by the way is really good. You can even see navigation on the head-up display, head display and I think that's very useful. But the talking points are four little tabs. One is the M1 over here, which is to, you can set what this function, um, you know, what this button will do, but basically you can choose the different parameters for the engine, the suspension, the steering and the braking to Sport, Sport Plus or Comfort, and you can set up your own M1 and M2. Speaking of which, M2 is over here. Generally, M2 is the more hardcore uh, racetrack only version. And then of course behind them you see the paddle shifters for the 8-speed automatic gearbox. Here you see the 12.3 digital instrument screen. I'm not so sold on the idea of having the rev counter running the opposite direction anti-clockwise, but at least when you go to the M mode, the view changes a little bit and then um, yeah, it's still, it's still a little bit strange. It's not the conventional kind of uh, tachometer, but it's a little bit better. But you get a lot of useful information, including um, traffic sign recognition, navigation controls. You can also toggle between different options here to see, for example, uh, engine temperature and uh, G meter and so on and so forth. So a pretty useful display, but not as complicated and not as configurable as some of its competitors. This is the 10.25 inch touchscreen for the main infotainment. Really reactive, really crisp colors, a lot of nice contrast. You can of course uh, control, uh, we can have different media. It's also a connected um, car so you can put a SIM card and stream uh, internet services. You can also con uh, connect your uh, phone with wireless Android Auto and wireless Apple CarPlay is pretty cool. I also really like this, uh, you can set up different driver profiles, but I really love this 
concept art here. It's very Atari, very anime, very cyberpunk. What do you guys think? It looks really cool. But yes, navigation works really well. You have some different information, like for example, that setup I was talking about with the different driving modes. You can see how that is here. And overall, yes, we've been driving for a while now. We've been getting really terrible numbers, 17.4. But in reality, we've been pushing it really hard. I can, I can assume you can expect numbers around 10 or 11 if you're going to be driving on the highway. It really depends. But um, <laughs> being the M3, when you drive with a spirited uh, right foot, the numbers are going to be pretty terrible. But all, on the whole, really nice system. Again, nothing new, but it works. So why fix it? Being an M car, one of the cool features of this new version or this new generation is this M Drift Analyzer. So you can click on this and you can activate this and it will tell you, for example, um, how many drifts you made, how long you held each drift, what was the length or you know how, how long in terms of distance, as well as the, uh, the angle of the drift. You can also change, and this is <laughs> really like magic, you can change the traction control, the special M traction control, from zero all the way up to 10. And this is with zero intervention, where a novice like me is just going to spin the car, and we were drifting out here on the skid pad, and I could see a huge difference when I turned it up to, for example, uh, six or five, or even up to eight. Uh, the car just makes you feel like a drift god, because it controls the, uh, the, uh, the, the engine speed, um, so it doesn't do any any of the ESP kind of uh, controls. It's basically just the the uh, the throttle control, but pretty useful feature. It also has a lap timer. So again, really useful features for the track. I really like the fact that there are still a lot of buttons. This is a shortcut to change the different uh, driver assistant systems, and all of the climatization, all the climate control, can be operated with these hot buttons, the shortcut buttons. And I think it's awesome because when you're driving, these buttons really make a huge difference and I don't like using the touchscreen. It's not safe. Further down, you have another volume control, a lot of shortcut buttons, which you can also program for different functions. Like if you want to set up the, the, the lap timer, which is a really cool feature, um, or shortcuts for navigation, there is also a drift analyzer, which um, is a really useful, really useful little fun feature. Uh, if you go into the track mode, um, but yeah, on the whole, I like the buttons. The center console has a nice glossy textured um, insert over here. When you open this, there is an inductive phone charger. And by the way, you can just use your phone um, as a digital key for this car as we are using. And that's how you can unlock and even start and operate the vehicle. USB charging ports or a standard USB, not a USB-C here couple beverage holders, 12 volt power socket over there. This is the shifter. It's a little bit different, you got to get used to it because now we're here and that's where you can engage park. Then you can go left for neutral and up for reverse and then you flick it right to go into drive. Some shortcuts for the traction control, the parking assist over here, the M mode, the setup and the loud exhaust mode, auto hold. These controls are over here. And this is a nice way to control your touchscreen without having to touch it. You have a lot of shortcuts over here, for example, media, navigation, and you can use this pad here and also use the, uh, the dial and even as a joystick. So really useful. And it's an old system, but I'm glad that they still keep it. A nice long padded center armrest, which opens up to reveal another cubby hole and a USB-C port. All right, let's take a look in the back seat. 510 horsepower but still four doors, so <laughs> you gotta love that. Getting inside is not that difficult, to be honest. I mean, the roof is not as high as, of course, in like the X3, but it's still a very functional sedan, very three series. The seat is set to my driving position. I'm five foot eight or about 1.73 meters. I have yeah, enough head uh, leg room to just about slide my feet under the front seat, although they're touching. Knee room is not too bad. In fact, if you have the bucket seats, because they're so thin, um, there's a little bit more room. But I would say if you're not going to be doing track days all the time, the standard sports seats are at least comfortable enough for longer journeys. Headroom is plenty. Of course, I'm sitting at the edge. Uh, but if you kind of lean towards the right a little bit, then you get plenty more. I have my own dedicated, uh, or rather the rear has its own climate zone, 
Both these seats have heating. There's a lot of options for these features, so it really depends on the configuration that you choose. A couple USB-C ports as well. Door pockets on the side, as you can see with some ambient lighting, that silver inlay. And back here, the middle has a nice perforated finish. Pretty good bolstering on the side here as well to keep the occupants in place, <laughs> as they should be if you're going to be driving spiritedly on a racetrack. Isofix points for the outside two seats only, and a ski hatch, but no center armrest. Hmm. But at least there is a third seat here in the middle. Let's take a look in the trunk. So, in the M3 you get 480 liters, in the M4 you get 440, so not much of a difference. An automatic tailgate, which I think is not that necessary, but hey, that's just my opinion. It's very rectangular over here, so it means you can load items easily. The wheel arches don't impede too much, and where they do, you have been given a nice little cubby with a net to secure some smaller items. There's tethering points as well. You have latches here to decouple the rear seats. However, they don't tumble down on their own, which is, I think, a bit of a shame. But when you do get it down, you'll see that they fold completely flat. All right, we're here in the Autobahn with the M3 competition. Let's put our foot down because it's unrestricted. I'm going to push the M1 button, floor it, go to the high speed lane. Oh, 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 bam, that's 180, 190 right there. This engine is a gem. It's so energetic. It's so lively. This is not the X drive, the four wheel drive. It's just rear wheel drive. But that M active differential just grips and goes. There's so much traction. Oh, and this really, this engine is so reactive. There is no turbo lag. That's just a rumor these days, especially here in, M, uh, in BMW M performance cars. And even though this is not necessarily that quick, you know, the noise insulation is not too bad. The suspension is also fairly soft. Of course, I'm in M1, so the suspension is in the full comfort mode. And this is actually kind of good for high speed because it doesn't feel very jiggly, it's a little bit more composed because of that compliance. The engine sounds great on the inside. So definitely, true to its predecessors, the 6th gen is also an Autobahn missile. So, as expected, in the comfort mode, the suspension is fairly compliant, so it uh, soaks in all the sharpness out of the bumps, and in fact, it's very comfortable. Steering also becomes fairly heavy. Oh, traffic's uh, speed limit, let's slow down. The, um, the steering also is pretty heavy and gives you good confidence here on the Autobahn, and you know, you want a heavier steering wheel when you're going faster. So gives you good confidence. Even though it's a progressive rack and it's pretty quick, as it should be, it just doesn't ever make the car feel darty or, you know, make it uh, very unsettled. It's very composed. You also have uh, different driver assistance systems. At the moment, the version I have here does not have some of the advanced systems, so I have standard cruise control, and it works as it should. There's nothing special about this. Um, it also has the traffic sign recognition, so when it sees the traffic, the speed limit, for example, changing, it can either let you choose that manually or it can set the speed on its own automatically. It has a lane departure warning system, so it's just a warning, it's a safety net, so it means that if you do go to the edge, it will uh, either vibrate or you can turn on the steering intervention for it to actually pull you back in lane. But the seats are also fairly comfortable. They're, of course, a little bit more stiffer, but BMW seats on the whole, I always find them to be on the slightly stiffer side. It's not a bad thing, but here, these are the standard seats, so these are not the optional bucket seats, so we still have um, independent head restraints and so on. But they're very supportive. I do like the contour. It gives you good lumbar support. Uh, it does hold you, hold your thighs, it holds your stomach, so it holds you in place. And, of course, if you turn off the 
M1 mode. Now the engine is fairly silent. You can also turn off the exhaust. I don't know if you would want to. The sports exhaust sounds glorious. This engine really is a gem. It's one of my favorite engines. Um, so comfortable sound insulation is fairly good. This is a carbon fiber roof up here and it might not be the quietest 3 Series out there, but it's definitely not as loud as a pure track weapon. So don't get confused by the word competition. Yes, it is a little bit more powerful, a little bit more um, track, uh, you know, in that direction of being track focused, but it really isn't, to be honest, because you do have a lot of creature comforts. There is still plenty of sound deadening and uh, things like that. So it is still an everyday sports sedan. Anyway, that's, uh, that's about it for the Autobahn. It's quiet, it's comfortable, the seats are supportive, and overtakes, pff, forget about it. Don't have to worry at all. Just put your foot down and boom, overtake as many as you want. This car is fantastic for that. Let's test the M3 competition out on these beautiful winding country roads. I'm gonna go into M1 mode. So now the sport, uh, sorry, the engine is in sport mode, but the suspension still stays in comfort. The steering as well, and the brake uh, as well. So ultimately, this is a great, um, great setting still for driving spiritedly on country roads because you want that compliant suspension to help grip the undulations on the road. But man, this chassis, they've added a lot of extra bracing and it's such a stiff chassis. The center of gravity is also very low thanks to that carbon fiber roof. This M adaptive suspension also is doing a great job at keeping the car planted. It, this is a cakewalk. I mean, still have to follow speed limits here and the car is just yawning. But this engine is so telepathic. 510 horsepower is plenty. Of course, I don't think anybody's gonna complain for lack of power with this kind of uh, number. And again, because this is still a very easy car to live with, now we're on some small village streets. It's a little bit more bumpy, but it's okay. It's quiet, it's comfortable. It's very easy to maneuver. The steering is really reactive. So that sporty steering wheel also helps in small uh, in, in the city because you can make quick corrections. You can dive into narrow lanes a lot easier. So it is really the best of both worlds. We'll see later once we're on the highway if that really quick steering makes it feel darty. But yeah, here in these, these, uh, these country roads, it's very agile. The seats are also doing a really good job of holding me in place. Again, you can set up so many different parameters. So if you want to have just the gearbox shifting up later so there's three different levels for that if you want to uh, set up the 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 exhaust the sports exhaust to be louder or quieter there's a separate setting for that there's a bunch of settings for everything so this is a little bit different I mean, we've known this from bmws uh, from the past that they have these uh, individual buttons for everything brake feel is fantastic oh my goodness just threading one corner with the next on this beautiful road that engine is so lively it's it's like a friend it's like it's it's a companion because it has such a great personality no turbo lag whatsoever of course you can also take control of the transmission with these paddle shifters to hold the gear for longer if you so desire power down linearly that traction control and that M active differential is also doing a really good job we all know that the M3 is a hooligan and this is no different it can let its tail out it's very easy it also has that drift analyzer <laughs> which I don't know if it's such a great idea I mean it's fun but it's like the drift mode in the Ford Focus RS it it, it gives rise to hooliganism, let's be honest. But it's there, and it hasn't lost that characteristic. 
but that dual personality that we've known and we've loved of the M3 isn't lost with this new generation. I know the looks are polarizing, I get it. We've had a lot of discussions, but give it time, trust me, see it in the flesh. And it will, it will, really, it will really charm you. I think it's charmed me anyway. Let's summarize today's episode. The price for the M3 starts at around 82,500. The M4 is not much different, just about 1,000, 1,500 euros more. But of course, there's a lot of options that you can add. And of course, if you get the M competition version, the M4 competition or the M3 competition, you're looking at numbers easily around 100,000 euros. So for that price, are you still getting that muscle car, that beast, the M3 that we've always known and loved? The answer is yes. It's a little bit different now because it looks a lot more different. And yeah, some areas I think could still be improved a little bit, like the steering feedback as well as the gear change. But on the whole, my recommendation would be keep it simple and then you will love it. So stick with the rear wheel drive manual version, depending on your design and practicality preferences. I would personally take the M3, but it's up to you guys what you really prefer. But I think then you really have a gem because it's practical enough, it's engaging enough, you can drive it every day because it's so much more comfortable, and that engine, that's the real gem. So, that's my verdict. Let me know what you think. Put it down in the comments below. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys next time.